All right, thank you for joining us today. We're here with head coach Kyle Smith uh, following the games in Arizona and ahead of this week's games in the, against the Bay Area here in Pullman. Uh, if you have questions for coach, please use the raised hand action and we will get to you in the order that you do so. Uh, we will start with Jamie Vinnick from Kootenay. Morning, coach. Morning. I guess the first question for you is, you know, you obviously are coming off a pretty historic win for the program. How do you kind of avoid the, you know, the, the proverbial letdown against uh, when you're coming home? Obviously, Cal, I mean, Cal's hot, but not Arizona. I mean, how do you kind of avoid letting down after such a big win? I, you know what? I, I think our guys do it, and I know our staff does. We, we really do keep it pretty even keel. You're probably bored with my response, but respect everyone, fear no one. It's a great challenge to see if we can handle success. Um and you're going to get a lot of pats on the back and there's a lot of kids coming back to school. So it'd be easy at their age to really kind of puff up and feel good about yourself. And there's a fine line being confident and being arrogant. Um, and a reminder that we're seven and 10. So <laughs> we got, we, we've got a lot of work to do. Um, but Cal's playing really well too. So it's, 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 uh, you know, I think coach Anders put out there the last four games are playing at about a, a top 20 program. Um, maybe in higher it was, uh, so that's, you know, I felt we're kind of same way. We were playing a little better, um, but our record uh, through that stretch of tough games didn't really reflect it. You know, you mentioned they've been playing better. I mean, the last two games, especially absolutely nuclear from three, something like 66% um, against Colorado and against Stanford. You know, when you look at that in a team like that, I mean, you do have to kind of throw out what they, I mean, they were 0-12 to start the season. When they're shooting like that, you have to kind of make that irrelevant, right? Absolutely. Well, adding Clayton to their uh, mix has been a huge addition. They just, for a while there, it's just Askew, is, it, you know, Askew's usage rate was 35% or whatever. And it's like he was taking on a big part of their uh, offensive burden. Um, but it seems like Clayton's loosened him up. Uh, Joel Brown's playing better, playing like a senior. Um, so those three guards have really, because their front courts, they're, they're big. they got a couple of young guys, but Teeman's really improved and Quanty's really improved. So uh, to me, it looked pretty good, especially the last four. Um, and that's sometimes that's maybe that's all it takes um, for us getting Jay and Andre back and is kind of gave us a lift too. So um, it should be a good game. You know, since you got here, uh, it's fair to say Cal has been kind of more towards the bottom of the Pac-12 just in terms of the standings. But, you know, they, they've kind of been pesky towards you guys. Uh, you know, you've won five straight, but even then, a lot of those by single digits, a lot of games coming down in the last couple of possessions. What is it about the way that, that Mark Fox kind of has that team play that, that makes them so difficult to kind of run out of the gym? Uh, you know, a couple of things. They're really competitive. Uh, they're well coached. They're going to be committed to what they do, which is impressive. Even – I was like, I got to see this, you know, because I know they had the rough start. They run very much the same stuff offensively. They run it well, and they're very physical and strong. And a little bit is our recruiting. You know, we have some slender guys, not a, no, no secret there. But they've had some guy. I think the physicality, they really try to push you around. You know, it was Team and Andre Kelly, but Team is still a big, strong kid. And you can see how much we recruited Kwani and to see his development where he's uh, gotten stronger and more athletic and having a good year and those guys and Joel Brown. And um, so I think it's their, their quickness, their strength. They've always, they're, they're just, they're going to compete hard. Thanks coach. Good luck this week. All right. Thanks. Jim. All right. We'll give access to uh, Jeff here out of the Bay area. Go ahead, Jeff. Hey Kyle, Jeff Ferrado here. How you doing? Go ahead, Jeff. How are you doing? I'm all right. We're getting uh, deluged by rain down here. so I, I saw that. Yeah, it's, it's usually a good thing. It is a good thing, but probably not all at once like this. Yeah, true. So give me a sense. You talked about Cal a little bit. When they were 0-12, can, can you imagine having to deal with that? And, and what's it like for players and for a coach to try to climb out of a, out of a hole like that? You know, uh, it's when we talk about handling adversity – you're tested for sure. I mean, I know we've all had uh, parts of a season where it goes out. We just went through a part, you know, down in Hawaii, uh, playing a really tough schedule. And you never know. You, it's always capable of losing your team. Um, but they've obviously haven't. 
And uh, so kudos to them. And like I said, I don't know if you were listening, Jeff, but uh, I was interested when I watched, did the dive on them film-wise, they're running their stuff offensively hard, running the same, similar stuff. So it's like, you'll usually see a team that breaks, they'll wander off, they won't execute, they won't do that. And and I think Coach Fox, I'm always proud. I think, he, you know, he runs with a pretty tight rein both sides of the ball. And uh, they responded, and now they're having success. So that's always a good feeling. Does this feel like a matchup of two teams who sort of all of a sudden are starting to figure things out a little bit? I agree. Yeah, I do, I do think that. I think uh, our analytics said like their last four games, I think they're playing like a top 15 team, um, which, I mean, that's a small sample size, but it's significant. I mean, Colorado is good. And they really dominated Colorado for most of that game. And I think that was probably gave them a lot of confidence. And then Colorado went back home and did what they do at home. Um, and then obviously the rival being able to get up 20 something against Stanford, who actually on paper, uh, well, according to Ken Palm, Stanford's better than they were last year right there. And so but I think they're playing well. And obviously we've had, um, you know, having a chance to beat UCLA, beating USC, um, we play, we're playing pretty good, too. You mentioned uh, Dewan Clayton, who didn't play in their first 13 games with a hamstring. And uh, specifically, what do you think he's bringing them? Uh, he's a guy who scored 1,500 points at Coppin State, but that's not the Pac-12. And we didn't really know how it would translate. But what do you see when you watch him? Well, he's in uncharted territory. Seventh-year guy. <laughs> I've never seen a seventh year guy. So he's a man amongst boys. He looks really poised out there. Uh, he looks like a, a guard that can do a lot of things. Um, he can dribble pass, drive and shoot. Uh, and he has that confidence of scoring 1500 points. Playing in a game is not overwhelming to him. I think that's some of the, and I think people are surprised. We had Ty Roberts, you know, was a D2 transfer and did really well for us. And, I just think he played on a 30 and one team and he played 30 minutes a game in those division two, there is a belief that you're going to be able to put the ball in the basket and do some things. And regardless of who you're playing against. Thank you, Kyle. No problem. All right. And uh, we'll give access to Colton Clark from the spokesman. Uh, in terms of the, the analytics and when you, you're measuring stuff in practice, uh, where is DJ Rodman grading out the highest? And, you know, what is it about his game that's kind of made him so proficient on the plus minus? Well, he's always been, you know, this fall was frustrating because he came in hurt and he would missed a lot of the fall. And, and I was on his butt pretty hard about your senior, let's go, you know, but it's, it's I know you're hurt, but we got a condition and I think he's getting healthy, but he's always like in our fall period, like a sophomore year, he won the hustle stats. And it's like pretty significant. Those guys means they're doing all the little things. And it, it's not only that he, he really understands he's smart. So it's a two way player. He really understands defense, his ability to take charges, can end possessions, his ability to rebound are terrific. And then he can make a shot. Now, even when he wasn't making shots, he was still moving the needle. Now that he's making shots, you can see that we were having some uh, really good results. And you can tell he's got a confidence. I felt like he was there a little bit the end of his sophomore year. Um, and then, uh, you know, junior played great and just didn't, didn't shoot the ball as well. And we were pretty good. We had a lot of front court guys, too. And maybe maybe him getting a little bigger role is really, really in, I think it's really he's enjoyed taking on that responsibility. And on that, uh, has James' three-point efficiency in those measured practices just just been off the charts? It, yeah, he has. I it was a little like eye catching, you know. Like first three weeks, it's like he's shooting sixty. Is this a fluke? And it's not. <laughs> I said, that's, I mean, it's like you just felt good every time he shot the ball. And I was like, and we were a little light in practice. So there were days where I had, you know, we had some managers in practice. Um, so I was like, oh, you know, but it makes you feel good. Like he, he's, and he's only getting more, his confidence is kind of growing more and more as we've gone through the season. And we see Mo, you know, I know we talked about him the other day, but we, you know, coming off the p putting up big numbers and such a big test, uh, just what does he seem to be doing right now that stands out the most to you that he, he was not able to do last season? Well, we did a 
a little mid-season goal setting. And he's really high character guy. He's really can focus on some things and he wanted to improve his ball handling. And I think he's like eight assists, one turnover over the weekend or something, or maybe three turn, whatever it was in the last three games. That's kind of what he said the goal. So he's getting more confident. So he's, we're playing through him. And I knew that would take some time. Uh, and then he's being more assertive offensively. Uh, and he just, it's only his fourth year of basketball and learning how to score comes from repetition and, and doing that. He has a good skill set. He's learning that on the fly. And I think you can see his, his uh, confidence grow. And I think I should turn the game. I think I heard coach Shaw yell, just shoot it. <laughs> and he did, he put it in. He kind of never looked back because he's kind of, he's such an unselfish guy. He's looking to make plays and share the ball. And he's like, Hey, just go at the guy. And, uh, and he kind of took off from there and we'll see. And we, you know, he's just a sophomore and he said like, uh, coming off the big SC game, he did, he did play well against Arizona state and he was able to really step up against Arizona. So now, like I said, task is going to be, can we handle success? Cal's going to be locked in on them. They're really physical. Um, that sometimes bothers Mo. Uh, and he's going to have to learn to play through that stuff and he's, he's doing a better job. And when you went back and, and watched that Arizona film, was there, was there anything that, uh, you know, you guys learned about yourself? May, maybe something that the, the, the guys showed you in that game that they, they hadn't, uh, you know, showed you yet this season? Um, you know, we've been in that situation about three times, the end of the UCLA game. And I don't count the Utah game because we don't foul, we win. <laughs> We're pretty good shape there. But then the Baylor game, even going back to Boise, where – Game was even about four minutes ago, and this one we were up five, but it easily could have gone, you know, we, we were in a lull there, and Arizona's really good, and they're going to shorten the or shorten the possessions, and let, you got to you got to step up, and make some plays. And Bamba, we talked to him at halftime about hey, if they're overplaying center, you got to drop. He ripped it to the basket, he finishes over Balo. We needed that, he needed that. Then the next time down, he scores on Larson, and then I think it was either next time or maybe. The, he took a three in there somewhere. I can't remember the order. End of the clock, he drives. They help. Balo helps off him. He hits Momo. It's a corner three. And uh, that's a good shot for us at the end of the clock. I think Mo makes more of those in practice. But it was just this evolution of Bamba, like, that hasn't been a strength. And he came in making that early decision late in game. And we just made – you got to make plays to win, especially when games on the road. Thanks very much. All right. Thanks, Cole. We got uh, another question from Jamie Vinnick. No, they only had canned red wine on the flight. I, I wasn't going to ask about the Modellos. Have you kind of, you know, you're just talking about Mo a little bit. I mean, has there kind of been a little bit of a, you know, a reminder like, hey, you just put up 24 on Balo and Tubelis. You can do that against anyone because those are the best, probably the best two posts in the league. Two of the best in the country. <laughs> yeah, it's a really, really good. Yeah, I know. I think uh, uh, he knows. And it, to replicate it, it's challenging. I mean, that's what I said, part of becoming, I mean, he's made people want to say, like going from, what, is seven and five last year, well, he's about 14 and nine, something like that. And the main feature guy uh, is really a big jump. And, and it's, let's see if he, I, I think he's going to finish strong from here on out. I think he can, the talent in uh, February into March usually emerges and, and I think he's on his way. So we'll see, but um I just got to give him great confidence. Long way from Prairie View, which was only a couple months ago. You mentioned you didn't know about another seven-year guy. I got to point out, Renard Bell on the football team, that was seven years as well. So there's one in your own backyard. Basketball. I like, oh, where's your basketball? The first seven. That football's a whole other end. I think, I think uh, Oregon okayed an eighth-year guy. So they're, they're another thing. This is the first seventh-year guy I've come across. <laughs> 